deep pressure and proprioceptive technique refers to one of the specific sensory modulation techniques developed by Patricia Wilbarger. Patricia Wilbarger is an internationally recognized expert who specializes in the assessment and treatment of sensory defensiveness. The DPPT protocol is broken down into two steps. The first step is brushing. It is recommended when brushing to choose a comfortable position for your child, sitting on the floor or in a chair. Use a soft bristled brush recommended by your therapist. When possible, apply the brush directly to the skin. It is not recommended that you remove clothing. You can brush directly over clothing instead. Apply the brush in long, stro slow strokes, firm enough to bend the bristles on the brush. Areas to be brushed include arms, underside and top, hands and fingers, including palms, legs, underside and top, and back, both sides of the spine. Never brush the stomach or chest areas. These areas contain many receptors that could elicit a defensive reaction. Brushing does not adequately reflect the amount of pressure that is exerted against the skin with the movement of the brush. A more appropriate analogy would be that it is like giving someone a massage using a surgical brush. The use of the brush in a slow and methodical manner provides consistent deep pressure input to a wide area of the skin surface of the body. The second step in the DPPT protocol is joint compressions. Joint compressions involve pushing together the two surfaces of a joint with a gentle but firm motion. Stabilize the side of the joint closest to the core. Compress each joint 10 times with a gentle push. Perform joint compressions on each of these joints separately. The shoulders, elbow, wrist, fingers, hips, knees, and ankles. The complete routine should only take about three minutes. Your occupational therapist will guide you in the appropriate frequency per day for your child. Some children immediately enjoy this input and others resist the first few sessions. You may distract the child by singing or offering a mouth or fidget toy. If your child exhibits prolonged resistance or you see negative changes, it is recommended that you immediately consult with your child's occupational therapist. The program will be most effective if carried out according to the frequency recommended by your therapist. Some children benefit from DPPT on a predictable schedule several times a day.